Welcome back to another episode. It is just me, myself, and I on this episode. It is Sig, one half of two guys, one gamepad, the other half being Rago, of course. He is not here right now, um, just like I wasn't there on the last episode, um, because thankfully, Roggle, uh, I'm gonna give him so much shit. Roggle decided to actually, you know, be productive last week, um, and he got, he got a lot of stuff done, uh, one of which is an amazing interview with, uh, an actual actor who has, I think, one, maybe two films, and getting ready to be part of a massive universe that's coming out, so we're excited, um, to to show those episodes but him and lane are actually working on it and they are interviewing a i believe a few more from the movie itself um we're not gonna give names or anything away just yet but it has one episode has been recorded and we are kind of compiling them all up right now so where they can be released within a month uh back to back or at least once a week uh, depending upon how many people they can actually get to interview um so good things are are actually great things are fucking coming right now and it's exciting times but the last episode Raggle wanted to give you guys a glimpse into a little bit more of who he is what he's about his background his history all that good stuff um and he requested and more words than less that i should do the same thing so that's what we're going to do on this episode is you're now you're going to get to get now you're going to get more of a in-depth or maybe more of a clear clear uh picture understanding whatever word you want to use there of who i am and um i'm gonna be honest i didn't listen to Ruggles episode all the way through sorry Ruggle. i'm i'm gonna expect he doesn't do the same so <laughs> I'm going to do it every Tuesday and Thursday. Spare me. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, again, this is just myself, Sig, and this is kind of a background and a recap of who I am, what I'm about type situation. So let's dive into this. This should be a shorter episode than normal. Uh, so without further ado, if you, if you didn't watch episode one of Two Guys, One Gamepad back on season one, we did a a very brief overview and dive into who we are. Uh, my actual name is, of course, Logan. I go by SIG as it is a military uh, nickname, or sorry, a nickname of which I have acquired in the military and kept post military life as a play on of my last name. And I am a, I can tell you, I'm from a, I used to think it's a fairly big family, but looking at a lot of families now i'm a i'm still a big family but i'm not nearly from a big family as as some of these other people i see coming from like families of uh, nine and ten and plus freaking people in their family including parents um family of seven one of five kids of course i'm the second youngest uh but i'm from i don't know how to put this I'm from a family that is, well, let's just call it what it is, uh, was and still is very conservative and very religious to the point of certain things just never were allowed, never would pass, never would see light of day. And uh, I can tell you, and you can kind of sense it in some of the episodes where Rog and I get a little personal, is it's come to fruition and a lot of things aren't so great right now but hey that's also why i'm in therapy so uh gotta love it but um family of seven one of five kids number four technically uh i have two older brothers and a sister and younger brother uh, really the younger brother and i were closest until probably high school and then you know we went on separate merry ways because we're literally just a year apart from each other so uh, when I joined the military, enlisted in the United States Air Force as network and signal analyst, uh, and then did a term, bounced out, and for reasons, and bounced out, and then basically, yeah, met my then girlfriend, now wife, by complete, complete random circumstances. Uh, I had just gotten out of the military and 
I literally just, I didn't work for probably a month and I was bugging the shit out of me. And then I uh, decided I'm going to go pick up my old job um, that I had before the military. And thanks to the USARE Act, I knew I could get back plus, you know, pay raises and all that stuff. Uh, if you know about the USARE Act, you know how great it is. If you don't, I don't know how to explain it other than it, as long as you're not gone a certain, not gone past a certain amount of time, the company basically has to give you the position back along with any promotion or progression and uh, rank, so to speak. And that kind of led me to the position I held, met my wife, and the story is kind of history. I moved up to Manhattan, Kansas, where we are now, and, you know, living our life now with two amazing kids, my wife and I, two cats and a dog, and... Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot to dive into, uh, but it's such a, such a clusterfuck, if I'm being honest. So, depending upon where you want to start, what you want to know about, it's, it's a shit show at times and others, it's quite boring. So one thing I will address is a lot of people will hear that, yeah, we, I make jokes, I guess, about certain aspects of my upbringing, which is the conservative slash religion religious side of the fam uh, house with the family or specifically my dad not uh, allowing certain videos to be watched, certain uh, directors or writers, producers of movies and TV shows or songs um, that we weren't allowed to watch because of whatever political bullshit or religious bullshit at the time it was. It was kind of a flavor of the month type situation. Um, and I know there's somebody that may be listening like, aren't you concerned that your family is listening? I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> it's not to be rude. It's just, it is what it is. It's in the past. And ain't no, there is no changing what happened. It's just moving forward and progressing. So, but there would be times where like, we weren't allowed to watch Nightmare Before Christmas back in the nineties because of something with Tim Burton. I, I could not tell you the exact reason, but it had, I believe it had to do something with either like, World War II era, which doesn't sound right, or uh, allegiance or ties or donations to the Middle East during Gulf War. It's just like, again, it's very, what I would consider now just very extreme, stupid fucking reasons that annoyed me then and pissed me off now. Um, but it'd be like, you can't watch anything by Tim Burton. So there was no Beetlejuice, there was no Nightmare Before Christmas, all because Tim Burton uh, was behind it. And then there became times where like we couldn't watch. Um, uh, so Teletubbies debuted, I, th I think late nineties, uh, Teletubbies debuted. And I remember being told, you know, we can't watch it. And um, it's because of, you know, the purple one, Tinky Winky carrying your purse uh, because, and it was, it was all over the news too. It was all over the news where Tinky Winky was supposedly gay just because this purple, entity carried a purse um yeah just absurd things like that to kind of shape it um i was extremely bullied for multiple multiple things from weight to my uh old, well, my older brother who's a male child uh, coming out as gay uh, and again this was back in the time too where i shit you not so many people thought it was genetics and I was harassed and bullied for years because I had a gay brother and they thought, well, if he's gay, you're gay by, you know, genetic, this man, nineties was fucking stupid at times. Like the, the cheap, the children were stupid. Um, but like to show you just the hodgepodge of bullshit went on. Um, I am military brat, military lineage. Well, we didn't move around too much after we came stateside, um, it was still, you know, hectic to, to a degree. But, uh, it was very old school family dynamic to kind of put in perspective of like, again, dad ruled the house even when he wasn't there type situation. My dad had final saying everything. My mom was supposed to do everything that he said. And it just, it was rough at times other times it was like eh, whatever but kind of put in perspective of imagine if you're 
an elder millennial, I guess is what people are calling us. If you were born in the 1900s, fuck you, Lane and Roggle. Um, you know, there is the time where like, go out and play. Streetlights aren't on, go out and play. Come home when the streetlights come on, if that or dinner, whichever one comes first. And that pretty much how spring, summer, and fall went. There would be times where we'd go out and do something or we weren't allowed to do something because we had to go up to my grandparents to help them out. If my dad was off for multiple days or on the weekends, we definitely go up and help on the farm um, or hang out with our grandparents. And it's just, it was, it was a unique and it was a good childhood. Yeah. But there was just rough in uh, particular times with all that. And it sounds like I'm jumping around because there's so much I can cover. And honestly, I don't really know what more detail you want. But yeah, so childhood was was a struggle um, up until high school. Then high school, I came into my own and decided I do one thing like so many other kids would do, which is let's follow in your dad's footsteps. So I joined the military. Um, I did try to join the Marines originally, and I may have got threatened by somebody within the family. So I got told basically don't do it or else. So I did do it, joined the Air Force and said, uh, cause that was the branch my dad was in. I wanted to do network or I wanted to do, uh, and Intel intelligence. So I got it easy peasy. Um, but I say I did that like so many, because it was just kind of time period, but now like so many millennial parents, elder millennial parents, whatever, um, since I do have my own kids, you know, we're all about breaking generational curses and stigmatisms and, and restrictions. So it's like, it's a fine, fine line. I, I don't know how to phrase it. So, but yeah, that's not a great glimpse of my future. I mean, it's my, into who I am. Is it? Welcome to my Ted talk. Um, anyways, so yeah, now again, yeah, that's just a very glimpse. And I know somebody out there's like, why is that so prevalent in your life? It's just, this is what stands out. I have a ton of amazing memories, but having children put a lot of things into perspective for me where I, I my children are at the age where they're asking questions about, you know, our own, our own childhood. And at times it's kind of funny at other times they call you out really quick. So just kind of put it for example, uh, we were having uh, spaghetti one night, spaghetti with uh, meat sauce. And my daughter later just goes, had, you know, did you guys ever have this growing up? Like, yeah, this was like, we weren't, we weren't middle class. We were like lower middle class. Uh, we are military is the best way to kind of put it. it like paycheck to paycheck, paycheck to paycheck type situation. But we always had food. Uh, my wife was a little bit lower than us uh, with her family, but the whole different struggles for her. We're not getting into that. But uh, we're like, yeah, you know, my, your grandma and grandpa, my mom and dad would make big batches of spaghetti. And this would last us for, you know, several days, family of seven, you know, my dad would take it for lunch. My mom would take it for lunch. All of us kids would eat it for leftovers um, as well. But uh, we were having garlic bread that night and my daughter's like, yeah, but did you guys get garlic bread? It's like, no, actually there'd be several times where, you know, it'd be just butter toast or there'd be times when. I kind of got in trouble for it, but there'd be times where I put, you know, butter toast, some garlic powder, onion powder, and a little bit of cheese, took the toaster, set it on the side, put the bread in there and set it for like a minute. So where it would brown up, I'd have like get a homemade garlic bread. And my daughter was so baffled by that to the point, like even my wife was like, oh yeah, we used to just have butter toast with spaghetti. And she's like, what? Why? That's so sad. It's like, wow. All right, you need to relax. You're you're you need to chill out. It's not that sad, uh, but small things like that to more intricate, hard answering questions, like uh, they gotta stay. And this was a while back. Uh, I do mean like over a year, like a year and a half, almost two years ago. Uh, they gotta stay at my my parents. And they're not allowed to watch certain things because some shit never changes. 
Um, but they weren't allowed to watch Turning Red. And Rago and I have talked about this before on the podcast uh, as loosely as we can, because again, we don't talk politics, religion, uh, but as loosely as we can. Turning Red just came out. Daughter was all for it. And when they came home, my daughter was you know, a little upset because she wanted to watch Turning Red while she was there. And my parents said no, because insert religious beliefs and comments here. And it was kind of a, a an issue because a five-year-old doesn't understand the gravity of some of these situations. They understand the video and the movie for what it is and at space value, you know, they're, they're not deep diving like a lot of us adults do for the movies. But she was kind of upset and she would ask, you know, were you were you allowed to watch Turner? I was like, the movie wasn't out at the time. So if it was, no, I would have not been allowed to watch it, just like I wasn't allowed to watch Nightmare Before Christmas. And she's like, oh, that's so sad. Why? And we had to explain it to my kids. Uh, you know, grandpa and grandma have very strict beliefs and strict rulings, and they just said no, and that was kind of the end of it. And unlike you kids who can question or inquire as to why we say you have to do something or why something's done a certain way, we weren't given that luxury because, you know, it was... It was to a degree you were just to do what you're told no questions asked and if you did question it, you would get in trouble and trust me i got in trouble a lot um but you know having these little moments with our children and there's so many more to come um uh, it's very eye-opening and it puts you in a perspective to kind of look back and and see all about it and think about it in more of a different light now that you're an adult and let alone a parent so it's interesting but yeah again family is family whatever it's bullshit not involved anymore uh, but enough about that uh, since i've been up or since i've been an adult married to my wife let's put it that way uh, let's see what else i think you guys know this so like all the graphics you see all the social media posts, all the anything you see for two guys, one gamepad, and now Ring Rage Report for the most part, uh, which Ring Rage Report is Lane Roggles and my uh, wrestling podcast. So everything wrestling related will be over there. Uh, you can find it on YouTube and Spotify and Facebook primarily right now. Um, but like I do all the graphic design for that, I do all the social media creation for i do content creation for uh but you also see where like we'll have a span where just a ton of media comes out and then maybe nothing that's not because we're not producing content it's just literally two of us run and operate this one of us works full-time the other one works from home and does stay at home dad so uh but outside of two guys one gamepad all the graphics you do see again is something i personally do as well i am a graphic designer a self-taught graphic design, let's put it that way too, because that goes cool for lots of YouTube University, Google University, um, and was using a lot of Adobe and now uh, Gizmo, I think that's what it's called, but uh, other programs to kind of learn how to better manipulate the graphics and create custom graphics as well. Um, a lot of help now uh, thanks to Canva, which we're not sponsored or partnered with, but Canva does make a lot of things very easy for us because it's a lot of time saver where I can have not only a template, but uh, we're starting to use a lot of AI for these wonky backgrounds just because they're they're pretty cool. Like this stuff I would never think of, but at the same time it hits home with or hits a note with the uh, kind of the the specialty of what we do which is everything or anything but yeah we have we have a lot of fun i do a lot of graphics design for mostly streamers i've done some small businesses um outside of that i am a uh, i'm now actually a full-time streamer as of like two three weeks ago of this recording yeah i'll say beginning of april 2024 i went back to full-time streaming because i was actually a full-time streamer six years ago six seven years ago and had a lot of success with it where we're talking i would say success okay let me rephrase i would say it's a lot of success uh i don't 
I will never compare myself to the likes of like Tinder's Hatman, Ninja, Dr. Disrespect, Pokimane, uh, QXC, QCX, whatever. I don't compare myself to them because they have mastered it and they've been able to play and stream for, we're talking like 8, 10, 12 plus hours. Um, I've never been able to do that for a multitude of reasons. One of which I have a family, second of which I don't have the attention span to stream for that long. I've tried, I've tried to do all night streams, all day streams, and it doesn't work very well with me because I just get bored. If I get bored, then, you know, it's not great. But, so I was having anywhere from like 100 to 200 viewers solely on Twitch at the time, uh, because back then it was just Twitch and Mixer. <laughs> Mixer's not around anymore. Um, got absorbed by Facebook and Facebook's kind of dropped the ball on that way to go. Uh, but I was having a lot of success on Twitch. I was very close to getting a partner and basically I don't remember what I think. I think my daughter came along. I think that's what happened. I'm not, I don't remember that correctly. I could be misremembering, but a life changing event happened. And I was like, okay, well, I don't have time to stream at the time I was streaming five, six hours. Uh, and I was partnering up with, with some buddies. And we play, you know, just a shit ton of Destiny 2. And that was like the only game I played. And again, having lots of success with it. Uh, life happened. And then I just kind of dropped off the face of the earth with it. Stopped streaming so much. And went back to a maybe once a month type situation. And now we're back full time. And we're changing it up. We're no longer just dedicated to Twitch. We are now on Twitch and YouTube and Kick and Facebook. Uh, it's called a multi-stream so I'm, I'm literally streaming on all four at one time. I'm also a variety streamer, so rather than dedicating myself to just, uh, say, like Destiny 2 or Call of Duty, if you were popping my stream, it, and again, extreme is not named sick. It's Cyber Merc sick. Uh, but it, that's not what it was originally. It was called The Six Hour. And I got told to change it by other people. Uh, but so if you were to go Cyber Merc sick, Monday through Friday right now, 6 a.m. Central, you'll find me streaming and playing all sorts of different games. And since we've started back as full time, we've, you know, we've played like Apex, Fortnite, uh, Call of Duty, Halo. We just played Splitgate this morning. Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, Overwatch. Uh, I say Call of Duty. Yeah, Call of Duty. And then again, I stream on Thursday nights with Roggle as part of Two Guys One Gamepad Game Night and just have a lot of fun. And it's so interesting because of the fact of it's slowly, gradually going back to where it was. I'm not near the hundred, but I'm finally hitting double digits after two weeks, three weeks, how many, two weeks of doing it. And it's so interesting to do it. Not only because you get to meet a bunch of uh, different people virtually, but the amount of randomness that happens is so funny. And if you ever watch any of like the clips I make or whatever, and you see somebody trolling me and I think it's, I, I think it's funny. I think people, I think it's really funny when people adamantly take their time out of the day to not just watch a video, which you could just scroll on. Like if you didn't want to listen to this episode of the podcast, you can just hit next, pause it, cancel, whatever, and you don't have to listen to it. But yeah, there are still people out there who will watch a video, a 30 second, we'll say 15 to 30 second, maybe a minute long video in some cases. And they're like, oh my God, this is so trash. This is shit. Like, and they're just heinous things at times, just negative trolls. And I think it's funny because, and while we joked about it on the latest episode of Ring Rage Report on the podcast, I think it's funny because Lane got trolled. And I'm one of those people, like, if you come into my, my chat, I will be nice with you. I match energy with energy. So when these trolls come along and these toxic trolls, of course, come in and they're just trying to put people down. Uh, like I've had some people tell me I should just like end my life, which is extreme over a freaking video game clip. Chill out. But anyways, I had no problem coming like basically telling me exactly what I just said. If you do understand you can swipe away. You don't have to watch it, but you chose to watch it and try bullying harass and of course I will gladly take all those people in my chat because realistically and this is real I do mean it 
there are people out there who do make this type of content and or make their own content and they get bullied and harassed and they're just kind of one comment away from doing something that's irreversible to themselves if you get if you catch my drift uh, so I'd rather y'all be toxic and trolls in my comedy, keeping you away from them. And it's not, a, oh, hero complex. No, it's it's just, I don't care. So when these trolls come in, I get to have fun. And when I call them out and then I tell them, you know, I hope you have a better life or I hope you have a better day. I hope your day gets better, whatever. Because it's an indication that they're typically struggling. They will give me one of three responses or they'll give me one of three things. They won't respond. They'll respond with, you know, just an emote or saying, okay, whatever. Or my favorite is when they try to combat it saying, well, they're not having a shitty day. I'm just shit at the game or whatever bullshit they want to spew. So I find it funny. Um, but I stream because I, I, I do enjoy, I do thoroughly enjoy being able to play video games and hang out with a bunch of people and, and just really be myself and, hang out with people like minded or not like minded but hobby wise that's my kid uh so it's a lot of fun like that's how Roggle i met was through video games slash a group we used to be a part of that's how i met a lot of my buddies is through video games or military so it's it's a lot of fun i highly recommend it. it's just a break from reality to 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 stop adulting for a second and decompress and just relax well yes on stream it sounds like we are so angry so so mad and we're not i'm not i'm not it's just that spur of the moment type thing <laughs> trust me if you watch us on thursdays you you know what i'm talking about uh, but at the same time like it's just a lot of fun and my kids are starting to get into video games so i get to play video games with them uh i'm very careful about my streams i'm very protective of my stream meaning like all my content, just like this podcast, is rated 18 and over because we I do use strong language. I, I'm not going to censor myself type thing. I say what I say. I mean what I say type situation. Um, so when I get people come into my chat and they're not of age uh, to be in there, it again, it's kind of catch-22. I think it's funny because it just kind of proves that just because you have a must be 18 or older to view this website or view this content, doesn't really stop anybody because it's just a button that says, yes, I'm over 18 or yes, I understand. Um, but like the other day I had somebody come in and they wanted to play. Was it Apex? I think it was. I don't know. They want to play along with me in a game and I'm all for my viewers playing games with me. I'm all for viewers joining on the fun. But one question I always have is, you know, how old are you? Because I, I get the sense really quick if somebody's of age or not based upon how you text and how you respond. Uh, and I was like, well, how old are you? And they're like, oh, you know, I'm X years old. I was like, sorry, man, this is 18 or older. Like, I'm, I can't play with you. I won't do it just because there's too many incidents, incidences out there where too many examples where uh, adults have played video games, literally just video games online and shit has went south. And I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to take the chance. I got too much going on that that doesn't need to be a priority. And yeah, that viewer not only unsubscribed and unfollowed on all platforms literally just disappeared because i was like i won't play video games with anybody that's under the age of 18. like i'm sorry i won't do it you're too much of a risk so yeah a little bit of my streaming i do graphic design of course and we have this podcast otherwise i mean i think we talked about it quite a bit i'm big into cooking big into like barbecuing grilling and smoking food smoking food uh, I'm always tinkering and messing with recipes or making my own. Um, I'm a, a huge believer of, you know, finding a recipe, I guess, that sounds good and then making my own little tweaks because a lot of these recipes out there, a lot of people recommend to season things a certain way. It just doesn't taste good. Um, I make, you know, my own sauces. I make my own um, spices from time to time. Or sorry, I combine spices to make my own seasoning combinations. Um, I'm getting ready to make my own spices, like legit, buy the, the vegetables to dry out and grind and make uh, the spice that I need. So, got a lot of stuff going down the line for that, which is why Roggle and I actually both want to try to get a cookbook of sorts released or work on one because we both enjoy food 
but yeah that is not a good glimpse that's like it's all fucking over the place but i really don't know what more you want i don't like long walks on the beach i'm ter i don't like the ocean sharks live there and other stuff live there uh yeah i don't know what else you want i really don't filler episode probably probably but hey who knows uh, maybe you found something else about me maybe you didn't if you did let us know Roggles sound i believe sounded more con uh compiled more well put together than mine i literally just press record and said let's do this shit let's figure out because i gotta also look after my kid so this is a little bit of town time i had but yeah i mean if you want to see anything else of mine and you want to see more behind the scenes of who I actually am or even ask specific questions whether politics or religious base even uh, or some asinine weird off the wall fucking questions go check out Cybermerk Sig um, over there I basically do the same thing I will talk about anything everything in the sun but I don't align myself with one or the other we just kind of keep those things off the table here because they're uh, toxically fueled so but yeah other than that check out thursday nights when rob and i play to, uh call of duty warzone specifically and we have a struggle of a fun time and then if you want to watch my personal stream just check out cyber merc sig one word c-y-b-e-r-m-e-r-c-s-i-g uh all the links should be listed down below actually in the description uh, but yeah, go check it out. And I stream Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. roughly central time. Uh, summer's coming around. That that time slot's going to change a little bit because I'll have more freedom since the kid will be out of school. Uh, but yeah, I hope you got something out of this. Uh, if you can't tell, ADHD out the fucking wazoo. Mine's all over the place. Did not take my pills today. So, all over the place. Uh, but yeah, I hope you got something out of this. I'm just going to keep repeating that. Go check out shop.twoguysonegamepad.com to save your, uh, to buy some merch to support the channel. But otherwise, go follow us everywhere else at Two Guys One Gamepad. Um, we have content rolling out, hopefully, on a regular basis. But, you know, it's hit and miss because we do have other stuff going on in our lives. And do stay tuned because, again, Roggle, Roggle and Lane are interviewing people from an actual movie and like went to theater set movie. I don't know how much information Roggle wants to give about this, but uh, he's interviewing the cast. So it, lots of fun stuff coming down the line. I'm interested to hear these, these interview myself. I have not personally heard them. So that's all coming hopefully really soon. Um, and then they have... Roggle and Lane have some stuff planned throughout this year as well. That may or may not include me. We will see. But until next time, everyone, thank you for tuning in and listening to this episode of Two Guys One Game Pad. Go check out YouTube if you want the audio edition. Don't forget if you want video editions, go check out patreon.com forward slash two guys one game pad. Until next time, everyone, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you. Or I guess we'll hear you. We'll deliver another episode every Tuesday and Thursday as much as possible. Until next time, everyone. Take care.